Welcome. In this video, we will take you through how to configure an open dedupe volume in Azure. We will then go through setting up and running jobs to the local open dedupe volume, the cloud open dedupe volume, and then finally run an optimized duplicate job between the two devices. In a previous video, we guided you through installing open dedupe and configuring a local open dedupe volume. To make optimized duplication work between two open dedupe devices, one on premise and one in the cloud, we need to create the open dedupe cloud storage device, which we will do now. As we did when we created the local open dedupe device, we will use the open dedupe configuration tool, open dedupe config UI.exe. Click on add volume. Give it a meaningful volume name, and in the drop down, this time we choose Azure for the volume type. We will set one terabyte for the volume capacity. This is to limit capacity for cloud storage, but you can set this as per your need. We will discuss local disk space needs shortly. Select a drive letter of your choosing, as before, we select the last available. The cache data path is where the data is initially written to, deduplicated and then sent to the cloud storage. This will be quite I.O. intensive, so keep that in mind when choosing the volume. It is not recommended to just use the default path. Depending on the version of the configuration tool being used, you may or may not see an option to set the size used for the cache. If you can set that, this should ideally be set to the size of the largest backup set. If you are using the older version of the tool, that option will not be displayed and the default size set is 10 gigabytes. This space will be allocated when you complete this configuration, so make sure the actual space is available in the path configured. Here we again need to provide the password that exactly matches what we have for the logon account that was created when we configured the local open dedupe storage device. To be able to connect to the Azure Cloud Storage, I need to provide credentials. First will be the name of the storage account, then the access key. We will then type in the name of the blob container we want to use. This does not need to be created first, as if it does not exist, it will be created for us. And finally, we provide the OST server name. Just to mention again, do not use the name of the backup exec server, and this cannot be the same as used for the local open dedupe storage device. Click OK and it will carry out the configuration. After the successful status, click Close and review the settings are correct for this newly added volume. Note that there are no containers shown yet in the storage account. We now have to add to the storage device within Backup Exec, as we did for the local Open Dedupe device. So let's open Backup Exec, go to the Storage tab and click on Configure Storage. Here we choose Network Storage as this is what is used for OST devices. Then select Open Storage and click Next to reach where we need to type in the name. This is a friendly name, meaning it can be anything that you like it to be. You can also add a description to the device if needed. For example, if you want to use the description to indicate a certain type of backup this device is used for. Click Next and it now lists the open storage types that are available for this backup exec server. We choose Open Dedupe and click Next. This is an important part of the device configuration as the OST server name needs to be provided and must be exactly the same name as it was typed into the earlier configuration tool. Let's take a quick look again at what was displayed in the tool after we had configured the volume. 
OK, so now we have refreshed our memory and know that we need to type in Azure Odd as the server name. The logon account displays this warning just because this is the default logon account and it knows it cannot use this account. So let's select the Odd account that we created when we defined the local open DGP storage. After clicking Next, it will take a few seconds while it finds the open DGP volume in Azure, and then the next page will show the logical storage unit available. This will have the name of the volume as it was entered in the open DGP configuration tool. Select it and click Next, then continue through the usual device configuration steps. Once on the summary screen, click Finish and the device will be created in Backup Exec. This cannot be brought online until the Backup Exec services are restarted, but as the Odd account does not have rights to do that, when prompted to restart services, select No. When back in the Backup Exec console, use the gear icon to open the Services Manager and restart the Backup Exec services. Now that this storage has been defined and the Backup Exec service is restarted, the device is brought online in Backup Exec and if we refresh the view in Azure, we see that the container has now been created. We will now create a few jobs. First, a backup job that goes just to the local open DGP storage. Then a backup job that goes just to the Open DGP Azure Cloud Storage. And finally, a job that will do optimized duplication between the two Open DGP devices. We will go through the steps of creating a backup job of a Hyper V virtual machine. For this example, we will only have File GRT enabled, just have the full job and not create a schedule. We will set this to use the local open DGP storage. Now that the job has been created, we will right click on that and choose run now and the job will start. The job runs at a good rate and completes the virtual machine backup in less than four and a half minutes. Next, for convenience, we will create a job using the create a new backup using the settings from an existing backup feature. We choose the job we just created to the local open DGP storage. Just need to edit the selections to match and then change the device to use the open DGP Azure cloud storage. We then select to run now when the job has been created. Again, the job runs at a good rate and completes the virtual machine backup to the cloud in just over four and a half minutes. Finally, we want to show data being duplicated from the local Open DGP storage to the Open DGP Azure Cloud. We have already added a duplicate stage for the backup to local Open DGP job and configured that to duplicate the set to the Open DGP Azure Cloud, as this is all that needs to be configured to achieve optimized duplication between the two Open DGP storage devices. As for the other jobs we have shown here, it is not scheduled, so we just right click on the duplicate stage job and choose Run Now.
Again, the job runs at a good rate and completes the virtual machine duplication to the cloud in just over two minutes. That concludes this demonstration where we have shown you how to install and configure the local and cloud storage devices using OpenDDupe and how easy it is to achieve optimized duplication between these two devices, as well as showing the great job rates you can get by using Backup Exec and OpenDDupe. Thank you for watching this video and look out for others in the future. For formal training courses, please visit the Veritas Education Services page at www.veritas.com slash services slash education services slash training courses. Also remember to visit our support pages at www.veritas.com slash support for further information.